What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here as always on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade JJ Williams, and today we're going to be discussing the sequel to Family Guy Blue Harvest, Something, Something, Something Dark Side, starring Seth MacFarlane, Alex Borstein, Seth Green, Mila Kunis, Mike Henry, John Benjamin, James Kahn, and James Woods. What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining me here once again for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. And today's going to be another fun one. We're going to keep going with the Family Guy version of Star Wars and talk about something, something, something dark side. Their take on The Empire Strikes Back. And I've got to say, you know, full disclosure going into this one, this is probably my favorite of the Family Guy saga. So don't be surprised if when we get to the end of it, I just kind of rant and rave and ramble a little bit about how much I adore this version. But let's get into it here, shall we? As the Griffin family is watching television, the power suddenly goes out again. Recalling the last time that this happened, the Griffin family turned to Peter for another story. And he begins to tell the story of Black Snake Moan, but is stopped immediately and is asked if there's another story that he can tell like Star Wars instead. So Peter begins to tell the story of The Empire Strikes Back. And after the opening crawl is finished, an Imperial Star Destroyer deploys a series of probe droids in search of the Rebel Alliance. One of those probe droids, which is portrayed by Joe, lands on the ice planet of Hoth, where the Rebels have set up a base. Rebel Commander Luke Skywalker, once again portrayed by Chris, is out patrolling with Han, portrayed by Peter, who at this point is using the call name Carlos Spicy Wiener. Yes, I said that. If you don't believe me, go watch the show. But they're out patrolling, and Chris Luke is attacked by a Wampa, who's portrayed by Cookie Monster, and then taken back to the Wampa's lair. Back at the base, Han announces his intentions to leave the rebellion to General Riken and Princess Leia. Princess Leia, once again portrayed by Lois Griffin. And Leia objects to Han's decision. However, she denies it when confronted, saying that she'd rather kiss George Takai, which I feel is a beautiful melding between Star Wars and Star Trek which is another reason why I put this in here to kind of bridge the two, having just finished the Star Wars saga and then having this in Spaceballs before going into the Star Trek saga. This George Takai cameo was definitely planned usage for this month. And when Han finds out that Luke has yet to return, he sets out on his Don Don to find him. Luke escapes the Wampa's cave and has a vision of his late mentor, Obi-Wan Kenobi, played by old man Herbert, who tells him to go to the Dagobah system to learn the ways of the Force from Jedi Master Yoda. Han quickly locates and rescues Luke, and the two are rescued shortly thereafter. But before they can leave, Han needs to go catch some powder with some skiing teenagers. And there's a big old juicy fruit commercial randomly thrown into the midst of this. Soon after that, the Empire discovers the Rebel base, and Darth Vader, once again Stewie Griffin, orders an attack on the base. The Imperial fleet exits hyperspace too early, which gives the Rebels time to evacuate the base, while Luke leads a squadron of snow speeders to hold off the Empire's Imperial walkers. Stormtroopers break into the base, forcing Han to escape in the Millennium Falcon, along with Leia, Chewbacca, once again Brian Griffin, and C-3PO, 
quagmire. While Luke escapes in his X-Wing with R2-D2, Cleveland. Luke and R2 stop to see R2's niece's violin recital, and the Falcon enters into an asteroid field, as opposed to going into the strawberry field, mind you. Han decides to stop in a cave in order to repair the ship. They reboard, though, and take off once they discover that the cave is really the belly of a space slug, portrayed by Meg Griffin. Meanwhile, Luke crash lands on Dagobah and finds Yoda, portrayed by Carl, amidst the foggy landscape of the planet. Yoda begins to train Luke in the ways of the Force, guiding him through a series of training exercises, including watching sweet-ass DVD releases, including a training montage which parodies Rocky IV. Vader is ordered by Emperor Palpatine, played by Lois's dad, Carter Pewterschmidt, to capture Luke and turn him to the dark side of the Force. Vader decides to recruit some bounty hunters in order to track down and capture Luke's friends with intent to use them as bait to trap Luke. And the bounty hunters include Raggedy Andy, whose Dewey Vader immediately orders to leave. With the Falcon's hyperdrive broken, Han and company escape by hiding amongst a field of disposed trash. But they're tracked by Boba Fett, portrayed by Peter's nemesis, Ernie the Giant Chicken. After hitting a space bum who was out just trying to collect some garbage. Luke has a premonition through the Force that his friends are in danger, and he leaves Dagobah in order to save them, despite the fact that Luke hasn't finished his Jedi training. Yoda doesn't want Luke to leave, but he has a change of heart when Luke suggests that Yoda goes and fights Vader instead. Han and the others go to Cloud City on the planet of Bespin in order to obtain help from Han's friend, Lando Calrissian, who is portrayed by Mort who turns the group over to Darth Vader. Han willingly gives Vader the location of the rebel base and is tortured for clogging a toilet in Cloud City by being forced to listen to Where Have All the Cowboys Gone by Paula Cole. Vader decides to test out a carbon freezing chamber that he wants to use on Luke to take him to the Emperor on Han first. Leia professes her love to Han, and Han tells her to fuck off. No kidding. Watch the show. Lando then double-crosses the Empire, freeing Leia, Chewie, and 3PO, and giving one of his guards a pizza party. R2-D2 has sex with a combination lock, and is discovered by its husband, but he still manages to get the door opened. But the rebels are too late to stop Boba Fett from taking off with Han. Luke arrives on Cloud City and is interrupted by Ryan Seacrest on American Idol. Luke then engages Vader in a lightsaber duel, and Vader cuts Luke's hand off before revealing that he is Luke's father. Luke throws himself into an air shaft and sees that a Cloud City worker has stuffed his severed hand into their pants before he falls, landing on an antenna below the city. Luke uses the force and calls out to Ben, Leia, and Tom Selleck. And Leia senses Luke's call for help and has the Falcon turned around so that they can rescue him. Once they have rejoined the rest of the Rebel Alliance, Luke is fitted with an artificial hand. Lando, dressed in Han's clothes, sets off with Chewie and the Falcon to go find Han. And Luke protests the ending of this film, 
about how it's such a downer, but he's interrupted by a Western Union employee who presents him with a letter from Dr. Emmett L. Brown. Back at the Griffin house, the power returns as Peter finishes his story. Peter then tries to get into another argument with Chris over Robot Chicken, but Chris vows not to let Peter get to him. Peter says, okay, there's enough time for another story. This one is called Without a Paddle. Chris shouts, fuck you, Dad, and storms off as the episode draws to its conclusion. Again, Empire, I made no secret about it when I reviewed the, the real Empire Strikes Back. Empire is my favorite of the Star Wars saga. And Something, Something, Something Dark Side is my favorite by and far of the Family Guy saga. I feel like they took what they did in Blue Harvest, which was already great, and then they expanded on it. More pop culture references. American Idol. Where have all the cowboys gone? You know, the emperor speaking to Vader about getting rid of his CD collection and offering him, you know, Alanis Morris set, Richard Marks, etc. All the way down to the Back to the Future ending where they set up Back to the Future Part 3 through the vagueness and everything. The, the references to Black Snake Moan the references to Without a Paddle, which I've actually seen that movie, and yeah, it's pretty bad. So I can understand why they decided to make fun of it here. You, you notice I'm not usually one to cuss a whole lot on my channel, on my shows, but the two F-bombs that I threw out here were literally quotes from the film. And I just thought it was so hilariously placed for those that I, I just had to quote them directly. When it comes to my rating of something, something, something dark side, like I told you yesterday, four stars, I feel, is the best I can give to a parody. This also gets four out of five stars for me. Like I said, I just feel that the references, the casting were just expanded on exponentially from the original Blue Harvest. And this is proof of Family Guy firing on all cylinders, man. Like they just nailed this one, knocked it out of the park, in my opinion. Don't forget to get out there on social media. Get those hashtags trending for me. Hashtag Casa D18 Studios, hashtag Renegades Reviews, hashtag Renegade Returns, and of course, the ever popular hashtag Shenanigans. We interrupt this episode of Renegades Reviews for an important announcement about merchandising. Merchandising? What's that? Merchandising. Come, I'll show you. Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money's made. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network for all the t-shirts you see here from the West Coast professor Jeff Meacham himself. You can get shirts for the Jeff Meacham Network, Talk Wrestling, as well as the red and gold Meachamania shirts. And while you're there, don't forget to get your shirts of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood, the Dads on Wrestling shirt, the Renegade J.J. Williams, Stat Boy Sports Bar, and the hashtag Statboy Approved shirt. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network and score your shirts today. Make sure you get out there. Do what that commercial just told you. Go to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network for all the official merchandise of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood. Get you your Renegade J.J. Williams shirt, Statboy Sports Bar, Dad's Not Always on Wrestling, Hashtag stat boy approved. Hashtag shenanigans. Get you your official merchandise. Get you your official merchandise for the Jeff Meacham Network. 
three different designs of the Jeff Meacham Network logo for you to choose from, Talk Wrestling, Meachamania, and so much more. Tomorrow, right back here on the Casa D18 Studios channel, make sure you tune in for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews when I close out the Family Guy Star Wars trilogy with It's a Trap. You're not going to want to miss out tomorrow on the final installment of the Family Guy Star Wars trilogy and the final Star Wars film period for this month. So make sure you tune in tomorrow as we take a look at It's a Trap. Thank you very much for everybody that joined me here today. All you guys watching the premiere, leaving your comments over here. I greatly appreciate you guys. All of you that watch on demand, leaving your comments down here. Thank you very much. I greatly appreciate you guys. Thank you once again for watching. I will see you guys next time. And may the force be with you.